And we live, baby. Yay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Mother Destiny. It's my own destiny. And it's Red Summer. And um, let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> my, my, oh, let me do my. I want to do that today. Uh, so if you guys have not been tuned in to our uh, series, episode one, we got an opportunity to talk about uh, creating the foundation and creating a good uh, village for your, to cultivate your mother-daughter relationship. Episode two, we talked about communication, what things were appropriate to communicate to your children and the appropriate way to communicate them. Um, also just understanding that children are humans and so they need to things to be explained to them just like adults would need things to be explained to them um mm -hmm. so if you guys have not gotten an opportunity to watch episode one and two you definitely need to do that <laughs> episode <laughs> three today we're going to be talking about the juicy stuff especially the stuff in our community that is not touched on um very often or very openly and that is sex mm -hmm. everybody's having it everybody ain't talking about it <laughs> that's so true <laughs> so um i want to start very like at the very beginning um and you as a mother you have both a son and a daughter mm -hmm. and both of us now have reached a you know a age of, i guess it's appropriate to have sex i guess but like so from a mother's perspective what do you think is a good age to start having that conversation about sex and what it is well, I think you start the conversation in little ways, you know, first, right? So you mm -hmm. start talking about the body and you start talking about your body parts and then you start talking about good touch and bad touch. And then you start talking about like um, the parts that other people have, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you know, you kind of start these, the conversation little bits at a time. Um, mm -hmm. before it's like the sex conversation right and so okay. if you think about like when you are with children you don't you didn't see you weren't exposed to as much sexual programming as young people are today right so, like it's really in their face like it's really um all around young people now mm -hmm. um whereas mm -hmm. before like i had some control over it right okay right um you all didn't have the internet in your pocket right, right. <laughs> like if you had a phone it like didn't do much right, right. <laughs> and so now like young people have access to all kinds of information all types of programming all types of images um and they can share them easily with each other mm -hmm. and so it was just you know i say that to preface that it was a little different when you all were younger okay because um I had the music that you all listened to in the car. And it was not the music that I necessarily always listened to when you were out of the car. Right. right. <laughs> and I was very just key on making sure that there were things that, you know, adults in, in the community could say or share or discuss, you know, around you and not. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel like there's so many times when children, especially black children, and I'm happy that the conversation is coming up a lot more now that, you know, black girls don't get to be girls, right? And they don't get to be girls for long. Um, the same outfit that you would see on a, a black child and a white child and yeah. the child is, you know, the black girl is like hypersexualized in some way. So like... I think it's important to understand that black girls are exposed to sexuality um, in a way that is unhealthy a lot of times in a way that they mm. don't get to have any agency over. Um, I wasn't as pressed about you like kissing a boy in your class as I was about the teacher kissing you. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> because like I just understand that there's a thing, you know, that exploration is a thing that like understanding mm -hmm. like who you are and, and all of these feelings and wanting to have certain experiences. Like as a young girl, you were just like, hey, I'm getting married and I'm gonna have a husband. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, word. Right. Well, that made me feel like I 
you know, had done something great <laughs> right. for you or you had seen a good example of what it looked like to have a husband, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, um, but also that like that was something that was normal and healthy for you to aspire to. Now, what we mm-hmm. didn't allow was for you to like say every little boy, you know, at school with your boyfriend. Like, <laughs> right. I wanted you to be clear that like, no, like that's an activity that's for older people. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so just kind of setting some of those boundaries. because, And that was just personal for me because I remember being five years old and telling the boy in the neighborhood, I am not your girlfriend. I am five. But everybody <laughs> thinking it was really cute to be like, oh, they so cute. That's my yeah. girlfriend. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that don't make sense to me. Okay. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And and just from the, you know, the your child's perspective, like I remember going to the bookstore and getting like puberty books and like, mm-hmm. you know, just being able to look at those things and like understand like the body and what happens and you know and what you what you said about exposure is absolutely correct as well as it goes to what we were talking about in the last episode just even the disney princesses like Mm -hmm. this girl is 14 who must kiss this 23 year old in order to live a beautiful life like you have to be like sexual with these men in order to you know what i'm saying and so i never And and because you like we couldn't even listen to R. Kelly. <laughs> like no, I can still, listen to R. Kelly. <laughs> to this day, still to this day, shocked and surprised by how much R. Kelly content I actually know. Because I do not have much recollection of listening to him <laughs> as a child. <laughs> and you all would be on it. And see, that was the thing. Like I grew up as a 14-year-old girl when R. Kelly was going to high schools and prowling, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I understood the importance of cutting that off altogether. Mm -hmm. And by the time, you know, you all were there, as soon as the song would come on, you would be like, ah, ah, you know, if I was, wasn't paying attention and missed it, like, it was like, hey, like, turn that off. Like, Mm -mm. the first (laughs) chord, (laughs) it was like, "Mm mm-mm, we're not listening to that. But then we would say, why? Right. Like, it wasn't just like, no, you don't like that song. So that you all would be like, ooh, let me listen to it when she's not right. right? It was like, no, like, he's not, a, he's not a good person. Like, he's not singing about good things. Like, he doesn't respect women. And, like, we could, could have that conversation so that you didn't feel like you were being kept away from something good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were being Absolutely. sheltered from something bad. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, then, uh, going to what you just said, you know, being sheltered from something good versus, you know, something bad. How do you relate that to having the sex conversation and like um, giving it, giving the conversation in a way or giving the talk in a way that it feels like I'm being protected and I'm being guided and I'm not being um, like hounded or suffocated? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not one conversation. And I think that's Uh the thing that, um, that like on TV, you have the talk. Right. right. You have it one time and parents don't ever want to discuss it again. <laughs> right. right. And so understanding that, you know, it wasn't just this one time thing that we got out of the way and, mm-hmm. you know, our hands are clean and now we can go on with life. Like we would have the talk in increments. We would go back and revisit the talk and I would just bring it up randomly and you'd be like, mom, oh my God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Deer said um, I, I brought a condom home one day and I gave her a condom and she was like, oh, okay, thank you. She said I was expecting her to be like, <laughs> she literally gave me that condom for my graduation gift from college. I gave her that condom in elementary school. <laughs> she had been holding on to it. <laughs> for 20 years. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Fifteen years she gave me that condom. I was like, "What are we gonna She's do?" Like, with well, I guess I don't have to hold on to this anymore. <laughs> but that was the thing. Like, we knew not to like feed into the terror of the thing. Like, oh. it's normal for a young person to want to test it out and want to see how you're gonna respond or see which you know how you're gonna react. Mm-hmm. And if you're watching television. Like, there's all of these extreme cases that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. Parents are, like, going crazy, and they're yelling and screaming, and how dare you, and I can't believe, right? And so 
everything that you came to me with, it was important that I allowed it to be an experience that you were having mm-hmm. instead of like something that you did to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm sure you're not there like mm, my mommy. Right. Right. <laughs> When you like went however you got to the boy's house. Right. right. <laughs> and so understanding that, you know, there is a part of it that's normal and it's natural. And then there is a part of it that is kind of like, I want to rebel. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if I gave you too much to rebel against, then you got to rebel even more. Right. To match my <laughs> resistance. Right. right. So if you don't have resistance, then you're kind of like flailing on your own for a minute and then it gets right. bored and then it dies out. Like when you was just like, mommy, I like a girl. I was like, okay. <laughs> you don't have to do that. I <laughs> am gay. <laughs> it's like, girl. You know, I, I've met you before, right? <laughs> girl, go to school, tell it to your counselor or somebody. I don't <laughs> I don't want to hit her. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my goodness! And I told my friends that that was a joke for a very long time. Like, <laughs> but I'm gay. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but when I told my daddy, my daddy was like, "What am I gonna do?" <laughs> because he. He needed that, right? That gave him a chance to kick into action. And then it was just like, uh-huh. oh my God, like all those people that she's around, they influence her. And I'm just like, she's really not. This is, she just needs something to, and because we can talk, right? I'm like, she's, she's a freshman in high school. Like she's trying to like find herself. She's trying to identify herself, find her people. Like just, mm-hmm. just give her a minute. And then the thing was, I didn't have any problem, like, if you were gay. I didn't right. have a problem if you were bi or whatever. Right. Um, my thing was, just find good people. You not going to be gay with that girl. Right. <laughs> you know, watch her bras. Like, <laughs> you can't, but I was at the school, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was, a, I, like, your friends could come around. Like, I knew the people that you were Absolutely. engaged with enough to be like, Mm-mm. absolutely <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I, I think that's really secret, important yeah if it's a secret and like y- your friends are not around me I don't know who they are then I don't get to put that mother wisdom on it and that is super important just you know speaking to the daughters like keeping that line of communication open not even just daughters but just children in general because this is a conversation i have to have with my little brother very often as well Mm -hmm. your mother is on your side like your mother is going to be the one who has to bail you out who has to (laughs) you know deal with the consequences of your actions especially since we're speaking on you know the high school age like whatever you do if you don't go to school like if you skip school too much your parent goes to jail Mm -hmm. they could take you to school every day If you do not go into that building as your choice, your parent has to suffer for that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very important. I, and we talk about this all the time. I might do it too much, but I'm always like, Hey, I think I want to do this, but I'm not sure. Like, what do you think? Like, Mm -hmm. I know that I'm an adult now, but uh, but my teeth is hurting. Like, should I go to the dentist or should I just (laughs) wait it out? Like, you know, something as simple as that. It's like, I'm always trying to make sure that, I keep the lines of communication open. My daddy tells me all the time, like, you have to seek counsel first. Mm -hmm. Like, the the best thing to do is to seek counsel first. Like, and so when you, when you're keeping secrets, when you um, think that, you know, like your mom won't understand or you're closing that line of communication, it's hurting your relationship and it's hurting the outcome way more than it's helping. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I, I've just known that to be true. We talked about that in the last episode. Um, when I first lost my virginity, the only times that sex was a bad thing in my life was when I was keeping it a secret from my counsel. Yeah. When I wasn't like, hey, what y'all think about this man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, now yeah. I can choose and I can pick and choose what counsel I decide to listen to. And that's just going to be us as, you know, the, the children. But I think it's super, super important to at least hear the parents out. Because they've been here. They've yeah. done that. 
And as I'm getting older, I'm just like learning, like even being a substitute teacher and having to be around other children and having to be the adult in the room. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Mm-mm, this is grown folks business. But it really just be regular stuff. <laughs> you know? It really just be regular stuff. And so this, this entire time we, were, we have this idea that, oh, they don't get it. They don't know who I am. They don't, they don't have internet, so they don't understand, yada, yada, yada. But it's a lot of principle <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's a lot of that stuff that we that can be avoided if the if we would just not keep secrets yeah and I think the so we're talking about our relationship right so we, we yes. do get that there are plenty other scenarios right right <laughs> there are plenty Absolutely. other scenarios where like mom is not emotionally present or mom is not available for a multitude of of reasons and ways, or, you know, maybe dad is not for all of those ways. But for us, like what we found to work is making sure that we were just each other's safe place, like each Mm -hmm. other's safe zone. And I didn't want to be hanging around a whole bunch of teenagers. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Right. Didn't make me excited it did one bit. Right. But I knew that I had to be around enough so that if there was a story mm-hmm. being told, I knew the players and you know the characters in the story. Right. <laughs> so if something was happening at school, I knew who the friends were at school. If something was happening at YEA, you know, at the after school programs and stuff, I knew who those people were. <laughs> So, like, yeah, it was important to know, like, who the, the friends were in the stories. And then if they were really close friends, to know the parents, like, if those were houses that you were going to be over or people that you were going to be with. Not that I was going to say, like, you can't, you know, have those friends. That was for Auntie. Auntie was the one that was like. She was real good at that. <laughs> no. But I could put Auntie on it and then I could be, you know, good cop <laughs> and be like, oh, Oh, Brianna, she can't come over here, but it's because Auntie C. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so that just goes back to, you know, the foundation of making sure that you have your village. And, mm-hmm. and I think that you touched on something really important by just acknowledging the fact that our dynamic is very, is, is something different from a lot of other you know, parental dynamics that, that, that are out there. And so I think that that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do it with you because I didn't want it to be, I'm just sitting here with no children speaking to parents, telling them how to, you know what I'm saying? So there, yeah. I think that that was, a, it was really important that the both of us were here and that both the parent and the child watch because I think that it's not always the parent and it's not always the, the, the child, you know? A lot mm-hmm. of times there needs to be some, some work going on in the relationship on both parties and I think that that's something that we've seen and just yeah. in our relationship that work needs to be and in any relationship whether it's platonic or romantic or familial yeah. like it, it work needs to be done on both sides and so if there's situations where you're watching this and you feel like maybe your mother is not even as emotionally uh, emotionally available as you would, would make you comfortable this is where we are trying to create that space for you to have that conversation and yeah. so I think it's really important that we, you know, acknowledge that, that everybody is not going to have our dynamic, but that it's possible with the work. Yeah. So when I think about, like, we talked about in the last episode, like, when I came out to you all, mm-hmm. but, like, when I came out to my mom, like, that was a completely different experience, right? Mm. So everything was, um, I had been dating a woman for a year before mm-hmm. I told my mother. And I told her when we broke up, because mm. I was like, oh, you don't even know what's been going on in my life. It's so, so crazy. And I've been <laughs> trauma. And now you have to stop and you have to console me because I'm heartbroken. Oh, and so she did. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she did. And she was like, all right, honey, it's going to be OK. And then she called me like a few days later and she was furious with me. Mm. Like a year, though. A year. Mm. And I don't know where you are, what you doing, who you around, what's going on. Like, you didn't feel like at any point that this was something that you needed to share with me, like that you could share with me. Like, you just shut me out of all of that for a year. 
And in my mind, I'm just like, I'm not about to be making no declarations until I'm sure this is a thing, right? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, look, I've seen too many after-school specials <laughs> right. Right, to know <laughs> what's possible. I'm not jumping into that water until I'm sure this is what I'm right. doing. Um, but for her, it was a breach of our trust. Mm. And a lot of times, we only see the situation from our side. And so I didn't see that, like, she would be hurt by me not telling her what, what mm. even though the whole time I'm building this relationship with you, like, right. oh, no, you don't keep secrets from your mama, you know? <laughs> right. I was doing that thing that I knew um, was making our relationship stronger. I was leaving her out of it. So mm-hmm. it wasn't until like I was able to go and just have the rough conversation with her, like deal with her emotions around it. Like, and her hurt emotions was not me being gay. Her hurt emotions was, well, if you, if it's okay, then why did you feel like it was something that you needed to hide from me? Like, mm. what are you doing? That's, that's so horrible that you went right. And so now her imagination is going and all of these things are happening. She's concerned for her child because now she knows that I can keep a secret from her for a year. Right. Right. <laughs> and now our relationship has to start over. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I could not blame her for that part. Yeah. Oh, you're not supporting me and I'm gay and blah, blah, blah. Like that ain't, that's not the part. The part is I lied. Yeah. For a year. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Like, oh, well, who are you dating? Oh, nobody, mama. All right, I'm gonna be back at tomorrow. You right. <laughs> I'm gonna drop the babies off with you. Go ahead and keep them for me. I'll be back. Mm-hmm. But not letting her in on any of it because I'm deciding for her how she's gonna feel about it. Hmm. So that relationship is is both ways, and I'm glad that you're you know that you brought that up because we are people. Mm-hmm. parents are people and children are people and that trust and that relationship and that um that communication the ability to to be open with each other it's not one-sided and it can't be yeah. all parent down yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah wow thank you for that though I never mm-hmm. you know I don't know I don't I just see what I see of you and dear's relationship and so mm-hmm. You know, just to even more prove, like, parents are not perfect. Like, they are people. Like, they are human. And so just considering that in all aspects. Yeah. And always considering that. Um, I want to talk about something that, uh, so you are a part of a podcast called You Gay Aunties. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for being everybody gay auntie, you know, because (laughs) everybody need a gay auntie. (laughs) Um, But you said something on, um, you do a questions thing on Twitter where people can interact with you and ask you questions uh, using mm-hmm. a hashtag. And one of the questions, um, I didn't read the question, but I read the answer. And you were talking about being experimental and how uh, being experimental is normal. And it's something that you brought up earlier as well. So I just want to touch on from a parent's perspective, how you um, allow your child to be experimental and also protect them from the dangers of being experimental as children. Mm-hmm. So the one thing is that you have to get used to being terrified. Mm. Like it is terrifying to know that like your child is, is out in the world and your child is not being protected and your child is not being watched over and your child is like in the elements with the people, right? Mm-hmm. It's just absolutely normal for you to worry about your children when they're away from you. That mm-hmm. does not end like at all. Um, so lean into that. Trying to avoid being terrified is what like keeps the child in this cage. Yeah. Because I know that you're right here. I can see you. I can protect you. Right. But mm-hmm. the child never has any experiences and then is expected to go into adulthood with other people who have experiences and be comfortable and mm-hmm. be normal and be, you know, accepted. That's not possible. So there were certain things that like I had to go and let you do. Like you have to go and just like be with your friends doing teenage stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't things that that 
I necessarily wanted you to do, but I would, I would allow it so that you could, could go into adulthood fortified, right? And mm-hmm. you go into it feeling like you got to do everything right now because you never got to do anything. Well, that's a lot to carry when you're out in the world on your own, right? But you Absolutely. can do things one at a time and come home to your mama and do things, you know, and do a little more and come home to your mama where you're safe and it's still in a structured environment and you can still have those conversations and I can still look you in your eye and I can see you and I can mm-hmm. say, hmm. Mm-hmm. You experimented. <laughs> and you could be like, oh my God, can you tell? <laughs> Ear just hanging off my face. <laughs> what showed you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I think like that was, it was what would have been helpful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just tried to make sure that I, provided those things Mm -hmm. and I knew that like you weren't here to be what I needed you to be Mm. it just that wasn't even gonna be your your outcome like you were here to be who you needed you to be Mm. that's your whole name right (laughs) right (laughs) right and so like understanding and accepting that and Mm -hmm. being able to kind of let go of the rain a little bit, you know, just a little at a time, just a little, you know, mm-hmm. because too, I stopped giving you advice at one point and you didn't notice. Right. Mm. So okay, like, yeah. Ooh, mommy, what should I do about this? Well, dang, like, what are your options? This and this. Well, which one are you leaning toward? Mm. Uh, probably this one. Oh, uh, okay, cool. You know, well, did you weigh out the pros and cons? Yeah, so I think this one would probably be the best idea. Okay, cool. Then. All right, thanks, Mom. I ain't said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but the, the goal was to get you to learn how to talk that out for mm-hmm. yourself and learn how to, to do that work on your own just with that support. Absolutely. So that you can take the training wheels off after a while and, and they're going to go ahead. Like they'll yeah. be able to go on on their own. And I think that's the most important part with um, allowing your, especially like around the high school time, of uh, just allowing your child to experiment with things because I was able to practice being in maybe situations that I shouldn't have been in. Or I was like able to come this close to danger or this close to this and this and this and still be able to learn how to maneuver in a time where maybe I wouldn't be in so much trouble at 16 and I, that I would be at 24 if I was doing that same stuff. Mm. And so just exactly what you said, like being able to learn how to think those things through, because especially when I first got to college, we were able to, we were able to decipher who had like a free childhood and they was like chilling with their mama and their parents or whatever. And then we were able to see the people who did not get along with their parents, who was sheltered super like, who weren't able to do anything because they were doing everything. Yeah. And we was like, you going to do that? I was like, yeah, I ain't never done it before. It's like, but you ain't got to do everything you ain't never did. <laughs> and so just learning, like, learning that at a young age was a, what made it easier for me to maneuver through college and through adulthood. Like you said, I didn't have to, I wasn't expected to be in situations that I had never been in before and come out victorious, Mm -hmm. you know, because I had already had, had experience and if not this situation, something very similar. And so I think that's really important for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked. Cause this, you know, another part to this whole thing is this all an experiment. And what works for one child might not work for the other child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trial and error. <laughs> you definitely have to, you just have to listen and, and respond. You know, mm-hmm. you have to, and responding from a place of genuine concern and love instead mm-hmm. of like, and, and I even hesitate to say that because for some people, that lockdown is their love, Right. Right. I love you, so I want to make sure that nothing happens to you, right? Mm-hmm. But understanding what reaction is from concern and what reaction is from fear is a different thing, right? Yes. So 
I I had roommates in college who had never been anywhere, done anything, mm-hmm. right? I saw what that looked like, like you mm-hmm. just said. Like I could, you could smell it on them. They just walk around looking like they about Green. to be got. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they're so willing to have all the experiences at this point. Whereas, you know, a child who, and this is, you know, I identified it as it being like my friends from small little towns in Louisiana Mm -hmm. versus like my friends from the city. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But it wasn't that it was like those who were able to, to experiment and have experiences before they got to that point of adulthood. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents feel like, okay, well you're an adult now. So go ahead and do what you want to do. But you still need guidance. Like you still need a safe space. You still need protection. Like you still need all of those things as an adult. So it's okay to allow that relationship to still be present. Mm -hmm. My my best friend. And when I was in high school, his mom literally at age 18, put him out the house, like on his 18th birthday. It was like, you got to go. You 18 now. Wow. Right. (laughs) And so, like, he he stayed home to go to college. Like, <laughs> right? Uh, where is he supposed to go? How is he supposed to right. stay in school? Right? You know. And so, there are very sometimes, you know, very cut and dry concepts of what a child maturing is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, parents are just so exhausted. Mm-hmm. They are so exhausted of parenting or being responsible for the child. Like if you're having to watch them, watch them, watch them, like you're ready for them to get out the house so you don't have to watch them. Well, right. stop watching them a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like give yourself those breaks. Give yourself those times so that you're not burned out so much that you are ready to throw them away. Right. right. My son wears me out. He is good and 20, you know? <laughs> but I have to go back and forth between the, like letting him go and do the thing and pulling him back in because I know that like his 20 is not your 20. Uh-huh. Even though you all were raised in the same house and you should have had like similar experiences, he does have whole experiences that you didn't have, like especially uh-huh. when we moved here. That was a whole nother experience that he had when you were away at school. And so it uh-huh. informs him in a different way. It makes him a different person. Um, and so he's going to think and believe things differently than you do. Yeah. So I have to make sure that I account for that. So just un- un- understanding the needs of each child, like you said, like me and me and Izzy were both raised by the same people in the same environments, but we've had different experiences. And so understanding that the parenting that you do with me is different from the parenting that you do with him. I think that's really important. I also wanted to touch on, um, you said something earlier, which is something that I struggled with, not because I felt like it was a pressure that anybody else put on me. I think it was a pressure that I put on myself, but to be who our parents want us to be. Mm-hmm. I think that was really important that you said that, especially. Um, being someone who uh, we're we're both in the same like uh, career fields, we're both performers and writers, and I always felt like I had like such big shoes to fill, and I had to be like Red Summer, I had to be like you know whatever whatever. And we had a conversation, and you were just like, "But you're my own. <laughs> like, <laughs> I named you my own destiny because you don't have to fill my shoes. Like mm. you have to fill your shoes." And so I think that that's really important because a lot of times, as as the I keep wanting to say students, but as the children, we want so badly to be who our parents want us to be. We want so badly to live up to this idea that you know we want to be the perfect the perfect uh child for our parent when honestly we just have to be the perfect person for us and then that'll just work because when I stopped trying to be you and started trying to be myself that's when I started to flourish (laughs) yeah I agree Mm -hmm. so I think that that's I think that it was really important to bring that up and to say like the kids you don't have to be anything for the parents and parents, you don't, I don't want to say that you don't have to be anything for the children because that's a different dynamic, but you don't have to be the perfect whatever, like, because there's no such thing as perfection. And so I think that the moment that we 
decided that we were going to acknowledge that there's always going to be work to be done. There's always going to be like compromise. There's always going to be, you know, give and take. Then that is what makes our relationship so beautiful and so organic that we're not trying to push this idea or this rhetoric of perfection on to each other. <laughs> yeah. And in essence, it just makes you perfect to me anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think the weird thing about... um those responsibilities though it's like yeah absolutely parents you're not responsible to your children children you're not responsible to your parents but you kind of are too mm-hmm. right so like don't make me be the only parent that don't have nothing to brag about when the parents get together absolutely <laughs> but also like do that thing that's like that i can brag about because that's the thing that you are good at right so the Absolutely. parent might be like, oh, my gosh, you know, yes, my child is, you know, he's at MIT and Harvard. I'll be like, oh, my God, my own album just dropped. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, living in your purpose is, is inspiring, period. Mm-hmm. And everybody's journey to that is going to be completely different. Absolutely. Like, as much as I'm excited about, like, your brother's grades looking good, like, all of that, he also built our debt. Yes. Like, he got out there. You know, he didn't do it by himself. Like, he, he had help. But, like, he he did that. And we can yeah. go out as a family and, like, be on the deck that Izzy built. Like, yeah. whoa, like, that's exciting, right? And now yeah. that's a skill that you have that you can go out and take into the world and blah, and do whatever with, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think those moments happen in different stages as well. Like, as long as parents see that, that you're striving for something, that mm-hmm. you are trying at something, mm-hmm. they will let you live in your ba- in their basement the whole time, right? <laughs> While yes. you're trying to get yourself together. And then when you move out, they'll be like, oh my God, let me help you with this box. I'm so excited. Right. No. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and that's the different feeling from, you just been sitting down here in this basement for three years. You ain't never even tried to. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, what what is that from? Is that because the parents want you to be something that you're not? No, they want you to be who you are. Who and you they are. they see exactly like what you could be doing and who you could be. And that's where that stress comes from in the relationship. Yeah. It's, I can it's see like that, yeah. any kind of, you know, kind of dynamic. You wouldn't want to be mm-hmm. with a partner who wasn't like, living up flourishing to potential yeah like you'll be like mm, no nah, you're not for me right <laughs> right right but as we said we're people and so we have the that same dynamic in our relationships mm-hmm. and one oh. thing i wanted to say like i know we started the conversation talking about sex it was important to me not to set up a double standard for you all Oh, Not yes. Talk like, about it. Izzy can go and do whatever he wants with whoever, and it's, it doesn't matter because he's a boy. Right? Talk about it. Talk that, about that it. That sucks. That sucks, and that's terrible. <laughs> and that's horrible parenting. Don't do that mm-hmm. to your children. Um, I think being clear that, like, a lot of times people don't talk to their sons about how amazing or monumental of an experience that is for him right Mm, his mm -hmm. first time we only talk about a girl's first time right right? (laughs) um we don't tell boys that like your body is a temple it's special it's important and everybody shouldn't get to have you Mm -hmm. right because a lot of times we just tell boys like get everybody who willing to take you right I don't want everybody being able to say they have my son either. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know, and that's because like people don't discuss the emotional damage that's done to men by mm. them being pushed into sexuality without having any emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the same way that I would want <clears throat> that I would want you to be prepared and to think about it and know like what you're getting yourself into and want to have the experience and have autonomy and a say over how it happens or when it happens and all Mm -hmm. of those things. Like 
I want that for my son as well. Like, I don't want him to feel like he's just um, a bull. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That just has to go out. To, like, that's, that's whack. Yeah. And if that's all you are, then you don't get to to move in the world with any real confidence. Like, you're mm-hmm. a toy. Or any real value. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes <laughs> we only have the conversation with our daughters. Mm-hmm. You know, or we only put the responsibility on the daughters. Right. Put and the so, yeah. On the sons, you know. And so the, and then it goes to, well, what does she have on? Well, did she mm-hmm. smile? Well, was there eye contact or, you know, things of that nature? Because now men are not used to eye contact. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, so now, you know, it's being justified in this way because the conversation is never being had with the men. So here we are. We have to be on the offense and the defense. Yeah. We have to wear a burka and know how to fight. <laughs> because <laughs> even though we fully covered, we could still be, you know what I'm yeah. saying, raped. And then on top of that, there's another conversation that, that's had in some homes where you've brought – um you're shaming our family because you were violated yeah and so absolutely it's so many things that 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 go left because the conversations are not being had with men and because men are not being held accountable for their own actions and that's something that we even see like in situations where it's like well if we're always saving it's my hell how is he gonna know how to get out of situations himself yeah but nobody like I'm, and I don't want to say nobody because I'm very blessed, especially in my village. And so I'm speaking very generally, but like people don't run to save the woman. Mm. Even though that seems like that's the, the rhetoric, we, we're like expecting for the woman to need saving. So that's just the thing, right? Mm. But people run and risk their lives to protect men who have put themselves in these situations because of the lack of communication. Yeah, well, like if um, a boy in college, right, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. you see these stories where like the the players on the team, you know, sexually assaulted this girl and it's the girl's fault, right? But she is being attacked for trying to destroy his future. Exactly. Instead of like (laughs) there being a conversation about consent. There being a conversation about like the the real way that this scenario came about, like that men can be predatory, that men can, Absolutely. can urge each other to do things that even they might not agree with. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the things like I, I have a poem um, in my book for Ismael. The first mm. time I, I talked to him about that dynamic and it was just like, he might not have even been, I'm sure he wasn't even in high school at the time. Right. But Mm -hmm. I was just saying, Hey, like you're going to be in college one day. And if you should ever walk into a room and you know, this is the scenario that you walk into leaving is not good enough. Leaving is just as bad as (laughs) participating. (laughs) Yeah. Like you need to, like you need to act, you need to help. Right. Mm -hmm. And having that conversation, like I said, not one time, but like this being an ongoing conversation about like, what is your responsibility to the women in your community? Who who are you in the space? You know, when you are around other women, how do you come off to them? What kind Mm -hmm. of man are you in their lives so that I'm not raising another dude who's just going to be predatory to the sisters in the village? Like, right. I, I would be responsible for not having had those conversations with him. You Absolutely. Know? And, and it's uncomfortable. I remember I read the poem at a, a college one time and the, the professor who brought her whole class to hear me speak burst out in tears. Mm. I mean, like we had to stop the performance. Tell me what you're feeling to her. She's just like, I never thought I would have to have that conversation with my sons. Like, they're, you know, they're my babies and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but if you don't tell them, who's supposed to tell them that? Mm-hmm. Because everybody else is going to tell them something different. Yeah, we just think that being a good guy is going to naturally um, 
show up in the world in these particular ways, but you mm-hmm. can be a good person and be improperly influenced. And that's Absolutely. what herd mentality and pack mentality is about. Like you'll Absolutely. find yourself doing things that you would not do on your own, but you're empowered when you're, you know, with other people. And so making sure that I address those types of things, I address those scenarios. Like I would just randomly call him and be like, so what's consent? Ma, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, you out of college by yourself. You on a football team. I need to know that you understand. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So that we don't, I don't see you in the news. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I think that one thing, one major, major thing to me is continuous. And so even when we were talking about, you know, you were already a parent yourself, you know, before you came out to your mom and there was still some, you know, some parenting and some, some work that had to be done there. So just understanding that just because they're 18 don't mean they're not your children anymore. <laughs> parenting is continuous. So even, even when it's time to talk about uh, experimenting with sex and emotions, that's a continuous conversation. That's yeah. something that you start, and because we still have conversations about love and and sex, and I, you know, and, and you'll be I'm like, you donn't understand, mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're still gonna have a conversation. You can you exactly. can take it or leave it, like but you got it, <laughs> exactly. And so, just understanding that it's it's a continuous thing, and it's a beautiful thing because it being continuous means that it's able to always grow and change and be better. Uh, there's always opportunities for growth and for for uh, benefit, and so I think that that's really important, especially in a in a time and an era that is so hypersexual, yeah. so in your face, like just people be naked on TV. Sometimes I don't even realize it. It's just like so normal now. It's just mm-hmm. like you know, and so just understanding that the job is never done. There's always work to be done. Yeah. And I think that's really important on the, the child side and the parent side. There's mm-hmm. always work to be done. It's continuous so that you all can continue to be better and to continue to grow with each other. Cause I'd hate to be growing and then like, I hate to outgrow, feel like I could outgrow my parent. Like that's so weird to me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That happens too though. I know. Isn't that so terrible though? It might be in um, like in different ways. Mm-hmm. So there are some some things that you just know more about, right? Because yeah. of the experiences that you had. And then you become the elder in that conversation on that subject, right? Mm-hmm. And being willing to let that, because it's the ego thing for parents. I'm the parent, I'm the, right? But for this, I don't know all of the details. Mm-hmm. So I need my child to tell me what did happen at school today? Mm-hmm. What was going on, you know, in the situation with your friends? Let them become the leader in the conversation so that you can actually have genuine ones. Yes. Genuine conversations and not just, oh, school is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. And I think that's what makes me just enjoy talking to you every day because it's just like genuine conversation about things that we enjoy and that we have in common. Yeah. And then the so things good. that you're teaching me about. Like, that's just as exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, do you have any questions for me? You know, we always got to do that. Uh, I feel like we kind of went back and forth. I don't know that I have anything lingering. Okay. Mm, yeah, no, I'm good. Thank okay. you. you did a great One job. thing I will say, though, parents, <laughs> the name that you give your child holds a lot of weight mm. because I spent a lot of time being like, but, but my name is my own destiny. I can't just be doing this, <laughs> this, and this as my <laughs> own destiny. Like, <laughs> and so understanding like pressure built, pressure bust pipes, but it also builds diamonds. Yeah. And so it, um, it took me a very long time. I was like, well, I just want to be normal. Why can't I just be normal? Like you're not. So it took me a long time to um to take on the pressure of not just the name but the title. Like I don't I I think that yeah you name me my own destiny, but I was always held to that standard of you are in control of what you have going on. Yeah. 
And so understanding that I think is also a really important thing. And so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed episode three of Mother Destiny. I hope that you continue to give us your feedback because we've been seeing it. Um, if you guys have any more questions, comments, or concerns, anything that you want us to talk about, we are more than willing to do so. I want to give a major shout out to Justin. Justin um, graduated from Grambling as well. He's a really amazing poet. But Justin has been watching this uh, our show with his mom. And he has hey. been saying that he and his mom have been able to have a lot of conversations and do a lot of healing because of this. So it started as something being just for the mother-daughter, but it ended up being something that is for the whole parental dynamic. And so I want to give a shout out to Justin for just showing us that that's what we're doing and showing mm -hmm. us that we're actually doing some help here and not just talking on FaceTime like we be doing every day anyway. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then I want to give a shout out to Jermaine. Yes. Because um, he also is watching uh, and has pointed out some wonderful um, just observations, I guess, mm -hmm. about Absolutely. what watching the, the episodes have done for him and the healing that he's been able to get. And I really appreciate that as well. So shout Absolutely. out to both of them, Justin and Yay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you guys subscribe and hit the notifi notification bell <laughs> so that you can be notified when any videos like this will be on your timeline. See y'all later. <laughs> <laughs>